Run for the Song podcast. I don't really think of, that's the thing with us is we never really thought about that kind of stuff. It'd be like, I would get a message, a phone call off our manager, are oh, you going on tour with Slipknot? But like, oh, that's that's cool. It'd be like, we wouldn't be sitting there high fiving each other, but like, because we weren't really into that kind of music anyway. Right. We sort of come from that sort of DIY kind of punk rock kind of bands that we always thought, oh, fucking hell. I don't want to go on tour with them, yeah. but we'll have to. And then, but the thing is, is you always, you, I've realized now is the bands you never think you're ever going to get on with, you get on with really, really well because they're exactly, especially Slipknot, because they sort of come from the same background as what we all come from. Yeah. Like, come from nothing, <laughs> became like this big band. And I think that's how we all, we, we all got on really well is they were just crazy. And we sort of bought into that as well. Because yeah. they had so much money, they gave us money to do stupid stuff, and we'd be like, "Yeah, okay, we'll just do it." And they were like, "These guys are crazy! Like, they'll just do anything for like money." Uh, <laughs> you know, we would. Well, you know? Have you got any funny? Have you got any well, specific like, funny stories like, then about they'd, that? They'd like pissing glasses and say, "Drink this," and you'd be like, uh, "All right, just drink it." And just so like, we sort of came. <laughs> they were like, "They're just as mad as we are," you know, like they're just up for anything. Yeah, and they, we just got on really, really well. The first time we met him, they were they they were a bit shitty with us. Really, and um, just because no one knew who they looked like, That's so we true, sort yeah. of rolled in, to, and they were sound checking, and the clown just threw some stuff at us and told us to get out, and we were like, well, and right, let's get in that that attitude of oh, fuck, fuck them, like who cares, like don't matter. Yeah, and then we did a few shows. We flew back home and we flew back out. And um, the tour manager came into our dressing room and said, oh, um, so I think it's Sean, the, the, the clown. Oh, he I, think, to, I think it's Sean, yeah. yeah. I want you to, I want, um, he wants you to come up and watch us at the side of the stage. And we were just like, I don't want to watch them. <laughs> and, like, and he just started laughing and sort of walked out. And we went up and watched like a, a song. We were like, yeah, it's, it's all right. Like, it's not our kind of thing. He sort of walked, walked <laughs> off. I think Corey sort of got like heard from the grapevine like we'd done that and he thought that was amazing because <laughs> back then well even now everyone was just wanting like kissing his ass big time anyway Corey yeah. and we just didn't really care about all of that so I think that was the the one good thing they loved about us is we weren't trying to be be their best friends yeah you weren't like brown nosers and stuff definitely like that. Well, definitely yeah exactly yeah in the slightest so i think that's why we why they like liked us you know it's it sort of came across like that anyway so it was yeah so when we hung out we were just hanging out we weren't like oh it must be amazing being in slip we were just like yeah just talking about silly things and having a good laugh and it's, i mean that's that's what bands want to do they don't want to sit there with people kissing their ass every five 